Hello everyone and welcome to a historical romance haul. Now these books have been, <laughs> I've been accumulating these. I have like two of these notebooks full and I've done these before but it's been so long since I've done one of these type of ebook hauls. These are all ones that at some point or another I got for free on Amazon, at least in this particular one. I'm going to pull up the first one here. Um, so that you have an idea of how long I've been holding on to these sheets to do these videos. So, uh, by Jessica. Here we go. So this first one is almost a year old. I shelved this first book on this paper, on this paper, March 22nd of 2023, I believe. Um, see all your activity. Yeah, so 10 months ago. So just, it's coming up on a year old. So these have been hanging around for a while. So it doesn't make these any less, you know, worthwhile or anything. They still sound good. And let's find out what these are about together. These are all historical romance. Now, I will give you additional tags if it tells you if it's like based in a war, if it's, um, maybe has some fantasy elements it, for the tags, if it says it's a YA or not. So I'll give you any pertinent tags um, with that. So I will be inserting the cover images in here and let's go ahead and delve right in. So book number one I have is Duty Bound, written by Jessica James. This is book number one in the Shades of Grey series and I'm pulling this series up. Looks like there are three Yes, there are three books in this series. The last one, when was this last one published? June of 2021 is when book three was published, or it's actually like volumes, but it says there's, uh, okay, so three primary works, four total works, because the fourth book is a combination or a bind up of all three books. So there are three. This has a average rating of 4.52 on Goodreads with 188 ratings. This is tagged um, anything different from historical fiction, I'll, I'll let you know, um, or historical fiction and romance. The only additional tag on this is that this is based in the Civil War. Most historical fictions I find tend to be based in World War II. This one is Civil War, so that's a nice change. All right, um, author Jessica James. Don't remember if I said that, but if I did, there it is again. <laughs> so, let's see. Okay, there's a read alert, reader alert. Oh, expanded version is here. Okay, so there it looks like there's an expanded version. Okay. All right, so the synopsis reads, Honor and conviction class with loyalty and love in this poignant Civil War tale that pits brother against brother. Readers will discover the fine line between friends and enemies when the lives of two tenacious foes cross by the fates of war and their destinies become entwined forever. A classic tale of courage, honor, and enduring love that has been praised by both men and women, from professors of history to avid romance readers. Duty Bound takes readers across the rolling hills of Virginia in a page-turning tale of action and adventure as a Union spy spars with a renowned Confederate cavalry uh, commander. Gallantry and chivalry are put to the test when Colonel Alexander Hunter discovers that Andrea Evans is not only the woman he promised his dying brother he would protect, but is the Union spy he has vowed to his men he would destroy. Um, oh, and then it just talks about how the author binds certain elements. So, that is Duty Bound. Alright, next up I have Heart of Shadows. This additional tags is Medieval. So that we have um, a Medieval Romance and Scotland is the other tag. This was written by Rebecca Ruger and this is book number one of Heart of a Highlander series. So let's pull that series up. Looks like there are six primary works in this series. It looks like they all begin with Heart. Heart of Ice, Winter, Heart of Iron, Heart of Fire, Heart of Stone. Yep, Heart of... Sh so they all start with Heart. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, six primary works in this. 4.44 uh, average rating with a 952 ratings. So 4.44 average rating, 952 ratings. Okay. 
Orphaned, Isabel Fitzhugh is 14 when she first comes to Wolvesley by the sea, traveling with her cousin to see her wed to see her wed to the formidable Liam McTavish. She's unimpressed with both her current situation and her cousin's husband. She thinks he is aloof and arrogant, well deserving of her cousin. But then Liam intercedes on her behalf against a mean-spirited tormentor and everything changes. He becomes a hero to young Isabel, one whose memory she clings when he is gone. Liam McTavish is quite happy to ride away from his new bride in the spring of 1296, thrilled to rise to the defense of his beloved Scotland. He doesn't return for five long years, many of those spent in an English prison, renounced by his own father left to rot. He finds Wolvesley not at all as he remembered, derelict and all but abandoned save for the re redoubtable Isabel, whom he barely recalls, and an improbable case of cast of characters. Both Liam and Isabel are tormented by grim shadows from Wolvesley's past. Isabel's fierce independence and easy smiles hide far greater tragedy than Liam can ever imagine. Liam's savage me mean and coldness suggest he knows nothing else, and yet they are drawn to each other. Can they overcome the past, leaving behind the cruelty caused to each of them by the same person? All right, next up I have Pursued by Elaine Manders. This is a Western one, so Western. Uh, let's see, has an average of 4.43 with 184 ratings. This is book number one in the Intrigue Under Western Skies series and looks like there are four primary works, right? Let's see, one, two, three, yeah, four primary works. Uh, let's see. An idealistic librarian and a troubled cattle baron fight wickedness in high places in 1884, Nebraska. Carrie Ann Barlow never expected to leave her Philadelphia townhouse and travel to the Wild West, but when she inherits a fortune, conditions are attached. She must carry out her grandmother's vision of a Western culture center, uh, Western culture center anchored by a library to rival those of the East. Such an undertaking requires political support, and no one is more influential than Ryan Kaysen, a handsome rancher with the reputation of hardened businessman and rabble-rousing lobbyist with a preference for the ladies. Carrie Ann gets on the westbound train with no thought of the treacherous world awaiting her in the little prairie town near Ryan's sprawling ranch. When Ryan is asked when Ryan asks her to catalog his library, Carrie Ann jumps at the chance without considering the ramifications. She rejects any romantic notions. Ryan is known to be a heartbreaker, and he is an atheist, which doesn't set well with her Christian beliefs. But they are thrown together when events take a dangerous turn, and menacing undercurrents run through the town. Then Carrie Ann learns too late that Ryan is uh, pursued by a sinister en enemy determined to destroy everything he cares for, including her. And they get, as they get closer to exposing the adversary, they realize he or she wants them both dead. So this sounds like this might have some Christian tones in it as well. So I don't know if it's going to be a full-fledged Christian fiction type of a thing. It's not tagged as that, but it does sound like it might have those themes in there. Okay, this next one is called The Hand Fasters, written by Helen Susan Swift. This has 3.98 average rating with 1,710 ratings. This is book number one in the Lowland Romance series. There are four primary works in this series. Let's see, additional tags. It says novella and uh, Scotland. Or novella, it also says short story, so I'm not more novella because the Kindle edition it looks like is about 171 pages so I would say novella not short story on that. Okay. Coming from the Scottish Highlands to Edinburgh in uh, search of her husband, Alison Lamont finds herself in all sorts of trouble. Thrown out of the fashionable ball of Lady Forez for a stolen kiss, she has to flee from a riot in the notorious Old Town and ends up staying the night with Willie Kemp an eccentric 
boat builder. The trouble is, when Allison falls deeply in love with Mr. Kemp, her aunt wishes her to marry the obnoxious but rich John Forrest. Allison takes drastic measures to solve her dilemma, including a long trip through the snow-covered Pentland Hills. But who is the owner of the mysterious footprints outside her cottage? And what secret is Mr. Kemp hiding? So this sounds like there might be a little bit of a mystery to it. I don't know. I'm going to move my mouth. Oh, that's better. Okay. All right. Next, I have Ruby's Redemption, written by Edwina Kiernan. 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 I hope I'm saying that close. <laughs> Anyway, this has 209 ratings with a 4.4 average. This is book number one in the Gems of Grace series. And it looks like there are three books in this. So it looks like it is a trilogy. And let's see. This says Regency. This is a Christian one. It does say Christian romance and Christian fiction. So this one is going to be a Christian fiction historical romance. A gentle clergyman, a broken prostitute, a blossoming love that will endanger both their lives. Forced into depravity by her tyrannous, tyrannous, tyrannous guardian. Overbearing guardian is what comes to my mind. I'm not sure how to say that name, that word. Anyway, so by, let's see, forced into depravity by her guardian after her parents' death, Ruby's life is one of vile deeds and violence. Unable to remember much of, outs of life outside the brothel's walls, years of despair and abuse have crushed all hope of ever breaking free from her captor's iron, gri iron grip. Until a likely, unlikely encounter with Henry, a gentleman country clergyman, set sets an escape in motion that will change both their lives. But when Ruby's worst fears are realized, the uncommon pair will face more devastation than either thought possible. As the dawning of a new life of peace and love is, rippled, is ripped from her grasp, Ruby discovers that true freedom has a high cost. Alrighty. Next I have In the Shadow of the Storm, written by Anna Belfrage. Belfrage? Uh, 557 ratings with a 4.19 average. This is book number one in the King's Greatest Enemy series. This one has, it looks like, four primary works in this series. So, uh, let's see. Additional tags is British Plantagenet. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, let's see, 14th century and medieval are the additional text on this one. Adam de Girandi owes his lord, Roger Mortimer, that's an easier name, <laughs> much more than loyalty. He owes Lord Roger for his life and all his worldly goods. He owes him for his beautiful wife, even if Kit is not quite the woman Lord Roger thinks she is. So when Lord Roger rises in rebellion against the king, Adam has no choice but to ride with him, no matter what the ultimate cost may be. Alrighty. Next I have In the Viscount's Arms, written by Allison Jeline. This has 1,541 ratings with a 4.14 average. This is book number one in the Stoughton Sisters series. I'm guessing is how that is said. Uh, three primary works. So it looks like this is only a trilogy. The last one looks like was published in 2020. I can actually see the date on that one there. Okay. Uh, let's see. The synopsis says, Reeling from the death of her parents, eldest daughter Octavia strives to be a source of strength for her sisters. She defies their grandfather's high-handed med meddling and his desire to see the Stoughton girls married. She forges her own path to independence, which leads to the gates of Cass Caswell Hall. There, the governess has just quit her post, leaving a vacant spot in the local lord's household. So I'm wondering where this is about a group of sisters, if each, if maybe there's three sisters, um, and each book will follow a different sister. That's what that is sounding like. Moving on, I have Highland Secrets. This was written by Elizabeth Rose. 
It has 538 ratings with a 4.01 average, and this is book number one in the Secrets of the Heart series. And it looks like there are four primary works in this series. Additional tags are Adventure and Medieval. Okay, so the synopsis breaks into two parts. So part one says The Lady Captive. Being a daughter of one of the legendary bastards of the crown proves to be a blessing as well as a curse for Fia Douglas, having both English and Scottish blood. She is being fostered in Northumberland, Northumberland per the late English king's wishes. This puts her far from her beloved family and homeland of Scotland. When war breaks out between England and Scotland, Fia finds herself in the wrong place at the wrong time, alone with a wounded Highland spy in the late Queen's secret garden. She ends up being kidnapped by the Scot and brought back to the Highlands, where she is now a prisoner in her own land. And then the second part says, The Highland Laird. Laird Alistair McPherson is wounded and left for dead at being, after being ambushed on English soil. When he stumbles into a secret garden in the woods to find a refuge, to find refuge, he discovers a red-haired beauty whose life has he's saved several years earlier. She is inclined to help him, to help him so she can pay back the favor. But when his life is threatened once again, he is backed into a corner and has no choice but to use her as a hostage to escape. Can a rugged Highlander love a lass whose secrets threaten to ruin his one chance at redemption? And will a woman who has fallen in love with her captor be able to betray him if necessary? So this one sounds like it's going to be a dual POV book. Next, I have his hand-me-down Countess. That's giving me Regency, so we'll see. Uh, let's see. 1,064 ratings with a 3.89 average. This is written by Sorsha Mowbray. This is book number one in the Lustful Lords series, so I'm guessing this is going to have some spice to it. And there are four primary works. Oh, but there is a novella prequel. So let me look and see if I can get this prequel. So, oh, wrong screen. Uh, there we go. Nope, I don't want eBay. I want Amazon. There we go. Okay, so the prequel is his wanton. And this I'll add, if I can get it, I'll add it to um, a different one for books that I have pulled by Sorsha. Uh, yes, I can get that. And it's only $3 for the Kindle version. So I will get that so I can read the prequel before I read book one in this series. Okay, so I'll add that to a completely separate list. Okay, so additional tags we have... Regency, so I was right, the title is given Regency vibes, so it is Regency. Uh, menage, adult, and of course it's going to be adult because of these two tags, BDSM and erotica. All right. This one says, his brother's untimely death leaves him with an earldom and a fiancé. Too bad he wants neither of them. Or neither of them. Anyway. Uh, Theodora Lott Lawton has no need of a husband. As an independent woman, she wants to own property, make investments, and be the master of her destiny. Unfortunately, her father signed her life away in, in a marriage contract to the future Earl of Stonemere. But when the cad upped and died, leaving her fate in the hands of his brother, one of the renowned lustful lords. Achilles Denton, the Earl of Stonemere, is far more prepared to be a soldier than a peer. Deeply scarred by his last tour of duty, he knows he will never be a proper, upstanding pillar of the Empire. Balanced on the edge of madness, he finds respite in keeping a tight rein on his life, both in and out of the bedroom. His brother's death has left him with responsibilities he never wanted and isn't prepared to handle in the respectable, ma respectable? respectable manner expected of a peer. <laughs> you know what I mean if I'm saying that wrong, you know. Further complicating his new life in an un is an unwed fiancé who comes with his equally unwanted title. Saddled with a hand-me-down countess, he soon discovers the woman is a force unto herself. 
As he grapples with the burden of his new responsibilities, he discovers someone wants him dead. The question is, can he stay alive long enough to figure out who's trying to kill him while he tries to tame his headstrong wife? Next, I have Teach Me to Love by Carrie Trumbo. Trumbo? I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that. Uh, this has 579 ratings with a 4.32 average. This is book number one in the Brothers of Bell Forch, Forchy, Forchy, I don't know how to say that. Seven primary works, and uh, let's see if there's any, okay, the other additional works are like a uh, box set, like books one through three and then four through seven. So there are seven books in this series. And let's see, additional tags. This is a Western. It says novella. It looks like the Kindle edition is 152 pages, and those are the only additional tags. Can a widow find love in the arms of a man so different from her husband? With the death of her abusive husband, Izzy Lawson should feel free. Instead, she's faced with a very difficult choice. Go home or escape to the town of Belle Forche. Uh, to the only friend she has left. Izzy heads towards freedom, clinging to the hope that ranch life will help her heal from her time with a beast. When she agrees to teach Conrad to read, his quiet attention starts to heal her broken heart. Conrad Ols Ol I'm just going to say Olsen. It looks a little weird, though. Like Olesen. Olsen. I'm just saying Olsen. Conrad <laughs> is illiterate. A, hum a humiliation he tries unsuccessfully to hide from his family. He takes no liking to the idea of his brother's intervention by way of a pretty teacher coming to call. When Izzy reveals her painful past, he can't say no. If learning to read brings him closer to her, he'll do it. But can he, he teach her he's ten times the man her husband was? Okay, now that one to me sounds really sweet. I love the fact that she's teaching someone to read. So, yeah. Okay, moving on. I have For Love of a Laird. This has 186 ratings with a 4.19 average, written by Mia Pride. This is book number one in the Irvines of Drum series, and there are three primary works, but it says there's five total, so... Oh, okay, it looks like there's two novellas that take place after the third book. So, so yeah, so we've got that. And uh, let's see, additional tags, medieval, okay? She was a wonder for the world, and she was married to his brother. <clears throat> Excuse me, okay, book one, now they look got it, okay. Now we're on the synopsis. <laughs> Betrothed to the elderly laird of their enemy, Disillusionment and duty are all Elizabeth Keith has ever known. She may never know true love, but her people will finally know peace. However, when tragedy strikes more than once, and Elizabeth is pawned from laird to laird, unexpected desires for one man threaten to compromise her dutiful existence, forcing her to defy the rules. As the spare to the heir, Robert Irvine understands his obligation to the clan during these volatile times. But marrying his brother's beautiful widow is more than he bargained for, and nothing he is prepared for. When all he never wanted becomes all he ever needed, Robert suddenly stands to lose it all. When war is a constant threat and a marriage to Elizabeth is the key to peace, Robert will do all he can to, se to secure both until he discovers she has done something that may destroy them both. All right. Next is Letter from a Rake, written by Sasha Kotman. This has 1,978 ratings with a 3.98 average. This is book number one in the Duke of Strathmore series. I'm guessing is how that is said. 12 primary works. So 12 books in this. Oh, there's a couple of novellas. So after book seven, there's a 7.5 and a 7.6. But there's two 7.6s, so I'm not sure on that. Anyway, um, I'll look more into that when I get further on into the series. So, a couple of novellas in that. Um, let's see, additional tags. We have Regency and Adult. So, those are the only additional tags. 
Millie Ashton thinks London's, London society is full of empty-headed, arrogant fools, but when she meets Alex Radley, she falls desperately in love with him. Fearing humiliation and rejection, she decides the only sensible thing to do is take her pride and go home to India. Men like Alex do not fall for girls like her, whereas every girl loses her heart to Alexander the Great. Alex Radley, Marquess of Brook, rules the ton like a god, but even gods are known to fall for mere mortals. With his wealth and title, wooing Millie should be an easy task. But when his passionate love letter to her goes astray, Alex's life becomes more than a little complicated. And that's all that one says. All right, this next one, there are no additional tags to tell you about. This is Clarissa, written by Jean Jacobson. And this is book number one in the Chronicles of the Hudson River Valley series. There are three primary works and looks like two novellas after the series. So a 3.5 and a 3.6. And there is a note saying that this is a clean and wholesome American historical romance. So there you go. Gives you so a clean romance. So if you don't want explicit sex, then it sounds like this is probably going to be a book for you. Okay. Oh, my hands are cold. All right. Teddy brings them together. Will love tear them apart? New York City, 1832. Clarissa Tanner is carefree and light-hearted until the sudden death of her parents. Forced to pay off family debts or lose her horse farm, she's given one choice, auction off her beloved horses or reluctantly enter 1830s New York society social season to face the dreaded marriage market. Nicholas is a man on a mission, searching for his missing brother. Fearing Liam may be the victim of foul play, Nicholas needs to keep a low profile while conducting his search. He takes a position as a dance instructor, providing refresher lessons to the beautiful but distracted Clarissa. Clarissa and Nicholas find a connection through grief and movement as they fight their attraction to one another. Will they give in to their desires and find true love, or will family obligations keep them apart? Now that's interesting. The the whole, it's like she sells off the horse farm, so obviously she loves the horses to pay off her parents' debt, or she has to enter into like a marriage contract. If I were in her position, I probably, and it was, you know, being in a marriage of convenience type of a thing versus selling off beloved animals, I would probably do the marriage <laughs> and rather than sell off the animals. So that'll be interesting to read what decision she takes. It sounds like she's going into the marriage thing. Okay. Next up, I have Undeniable, written by Laura Stapleton. This has 1,243 ratings with a 3.95 average. This is book number one in the Oregon Trail series. Now, I remember in the 90s playing in elementary, so I'm talking like early 90s, like 91, 92, 93 type of a thing, playing the computer game um, the Oregon Trail, how you died of dysentery all the time. Uh, so there are four primary works in this. Now, Undeniable says it's book number one, but there is a prequel to this called Unavoidable. So let me see if that is still available to get. Unavoid. The Bull by Laura. by Laura Stapleton. It's not looking like it is available. Huh. -uh. All right, I am going to go this way. Shop by series, let's try that. Nope, I can't find the novella, so it doesn't look like it is available any longer if it was. So, 
Uh, looks like the novella was back in 2014, but Undeniable was from 2013. So I, but yeah, it's not pulling up. So I will not worry about that one. Okay. Let's go ahead and get into the synopsis. Additional tags. We have, oh, did I give you the additional tags already? Let me do that just in case. Um, adventure, Western, those are the additional tags. Okay. Beth Ann Roberts made her father a deathbed promise to be a wife to her deceased sister's husband, Daggert Bartlett. When Daggert sells the farm to join the gold rush, Beth must go with him, never expecting how much her life will change. Nicholas Granville is forced by his brother to help a group as they travel to Oregon Trail from Missouri, uh, Travel the Oregon Trail from Missouri to Oregon, mourning his late wife. Nick's heart began healing the moment he saw Beth. Now the couple must find a way to fight a love that is undeniable. All right. Next, I have The Dark Queen, written by Susan Carroll. This has 3,413 ratings with a 3.86 average. This is book number one in The Dark Queen saga. Six primary works in this series. So it looks like six books. Okay. Um, additional tags. We have fantasy. So some fantastical elements it looks like. Witches, paranormal, and France. All right. The synopsis says, From Brittany's uh, misty shores to the decadent splendor of Paris's royal court, one woman must fulfill her destiny while facing the treacherous designs of Catherine de Medici, mm, uh, the Dark Queen. She is Ar Ariane, the Lady of Fair Isle, one of the Cheney sisters renowned for their mystical skills and for keeping the Isle secure uh, and prosperous. But this is a time when women of ability are deemed sorceresses, when Renaissance France is torn by ruthless political intrigues and all are held in thrall to the sinister ambitions of Queen Catherine de Medici. I know, I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. I do apologize if you know how to say it. I am sorry, I'm saying it wrong. I'm sure I am. Uh, let's see. Then a wounded stranger arrives on Fair Isle. Bearing a secret, the Dark Queen will do everything in her power to possess. The only person Ariane can turn to is the Comte de Renard, a nobleman with fiery determination and a past as mysterious as his own unusual gifts. So there we go. Uh, let's see. Oh, so it says how this is a riveting novel. Okay. Moving on. This one is actually a prequel to a series. Uh, this one is His Wagon Train Sweetheart, written by Catherine Kennedy. And this is the prequel to the Walton Valley series. And there are three primary works in this. So, that's obviously not including this prequel. Uh, no additional tags, and this is a novella. It's 99 pages for the Kindle, according to Goodreads. So short story novella, kind of on the border there between the two, it sounds like. All right. Writing the Santa Fe Trail is a difficult and lonely profession, especially for a girl named George. Georgiana Walton's father sat her on the back of a horse the moment she could sit up straight. Ever since, they have traveled together from one side of the country to the other with no place to call home. With no mother to guide her, George has learned everything she knows from her father, Harry. But she wants nothing more than to settle down and have a place to call home. Elijah Mitchell is traveling to Santa Fe to take up a position as a doctor. However, when Harry has an accident on the trail, Eli cannot leave him alone on the prairie. While he ministers to the cantankerous old man, his mother begins to teach George, uh, let's see, all the things her own mother could not. She is a wild woman from the West. He is a very proper doctor from, the, from back East. Can they form the unlikeliest of partnerships out in the wild, untamed Kansas prairie? Next, I have An Agent for Bernadette. Okay, this one's going to be a long series. <laughs> this is book number 53 in the Pinkerton Matchmaker series. So let me pull this up. 81 primary works. Now there is a novella. Let me look at, see if I can even get the novella. Um, like 
where I couldn't for the last one. So the novella, prequel novella, is the Pinkerton Matchmaker. So let's see. Yeah. Wait, now this is written by, is this written by a different? Okay, now this is interesting. So scrolling through these books, um, we have several different authors that have contributed books to this series. So yes, I can get the Kindle for this series, the prequel uh, edition. So this prequel was written by Christine Sterling, book number one by Amelia C. Adams, book number two by Sophie Dawson. You get it, a bunch of different authors. So book number 53 was written by Jovi Grace. So again, this is an agent for Bernadette. This one has 288 ratings with a 4.31 average. There are no additional tags to tell you about. Looks like this is a short story because it's only 132 pages for the Kindle. Poor little rich girl, Bernadette Chambers is weary of being told what to do. All her life, she's been instructed how to dress, how to act, and who she is allowed to befriend. However, she draws the line at being told she has to marry a man she's never met, even if refusing to marry him means being cut off from her family's fortune. Realizing she'll need a job to support herself in her bid for independence, she decides to become a Pinkerton agent only to discover she'll be required to marry a fellow agent, in name only, before receiving her first case. Park Harrington is a shipping tycoon by day and a Pinkerton agent by night, which leaves him little time for courting. When the oldest daughter of his family's greatest competitor refuses to honor their arranged marriage or agreement, he despairs of ever finding a suitable woman to lead the altar. When he finds out the name of, leader, of Lady Pinkerton's newest recruit is none other than the spoiled, indulged debutante who refused his hand in marriage, he decides to get revenge by requesting to be matched to her for the next case. <laughs> that sounds pretty good. Okay. Next, I have a novella, 120 pages for the Kindle edition. This is How to Live Happily Ever After, written by Bree Wolf, and this is number 6.5 in the Happily Ever Regency series. Six primary works, so it looks like this one is the only uh, novella after. It's the, like, there's book six and then 6.5. So, six primary works. And let's see, this one is, let's see, so written by Brie Wolf, 787 pages with a 3.97 average. And let's see, additional tags we have Regency, and this is a fairy tale retelling. All right, let's see if we can find out which fairy tale this is. Mm, let's see, here we go. Okay, Miss Agnes Bottombrook accepted long ago that she would never marry. Not even when she was still young did gentlemen see anything in her that would appeal to them. Now, at nine and twenty years of age, all hope is lost and Agnes is on the shelf for good. Or isn't she? Out of nowhere, the rakishly handsome and young, mind you, Lord Wentford asks Agnes for a dance, shocking not only Agnes but all of London society, most of all his own mother. Certain that his intentions are far more honorable, Agnes tries her utmost to rebuff the young lord and reveal him as a scoundrel, only seeking her attention to win a bet or wager of some kind. Oh, or far from honorable. Okay, far from honorable. So she doesn't think he's honorable. I think I read that wrong. Either I read it right and it didn't compute properly. Or I read it wrong. But anyway, <laughs> moving on. Unfortunately, Lord Wentford cannot be rebuffed, no matter how hard Agnes tries, forcing her to contemplate the possibility, remote as it might be, that he might truly care for her. Or doesn't he? Without her consent, Agnes finds herself, herself swept off her feet by her most unexpected suitor, doubting her own sanity when desires she thought she had long since abandoned resurface. Will she dare believe him? or would she be a fool to do so, or rather not to do so? Okay, so this one is the prequel to this. Even though it's 6.5, it says it's a prequel. It says this is a prequel to book one in the series, and it can be read as a standalone. So that is good to know.
Next I have Written in Leaves, written by Brianne Willis. This has 15 ratings with a 3.2 average. No additional tags to tell you about, and looks like this is a standalone. It's not mentioning a series from right off where it's obvious. So, when they first meet, uh, Marielle and Benjamin fall into a puddle. The circumstances are hardly ideal, yet neither can stop thinking of the encounter and what it means for each of them. Marielle lives a relatively safe existence as a gardener at a popular tea house, suspicious of romantic attraction. They exist as both man and woman, content in their skin. However, not everyone accepts such fluidity nor modernism. Benjamin manages his family's successful publishing house, believing love is merely fiction. The two agree on an unlikely arrangement amidst the vibrance and prejudice of 1820 Paris. Soon they form a fierce bond, one that may jeopardize both of their familiar lives. Okay. Okay, next up I have Wilderness Trail of Love, written by Dorothy Wiley. Wiley or Willie? Wiley. It's W I L E Y, and this is one of those names that I've heard pronounced both ways. Same thing like Wild and Wildy. I've heard pronounced both ways, so I'm not sure which one the author goes with on this one. This has 736 ratings with a 4.15 average, and this is book number one in the American Wilderness series. And there are six primary works in this. And let's see, everything after book six looks like is a box set, so groupings of one point, uh, books one through three and then four through six. So, um, additional tags, Western. That's the only additional tag. Okay. Let's see. Will uh, Stephen's dream cost him what he values most? Jane's love. Let's see. So award-winning historical romance author. Let's see. Here. Okay, here we go. Set in 1797 on America's romantic frontier, this gripping journey of danger, heartache, and passion is the story of Stephen Wiley and his heroic and breathtaking quest for land across a thousand perilous miles to the Kentucky wilderness, a new world for the brave. Stephen wants only one thing, uh, more than land to keep his wife Jane and their young daughters safe, but he needs land to make a better future for his family, and the frontier lies open to settlement in the new state of Kentucky. He must make a difficult decision uh, choose between the comfort and safety of their New Hampshire home and his dream for their future. Can he risk exposing them to the dangers of the wilderness? There, an immediate threat makes the decision clear. A vicious half-Indian killer, Bomazine, uh, begins to haunt the area, stealing slaves for the Algonquins. What just happened there? Oh. Uh, to replace those lost to smallpox. Having glimpsed their great beauty from afar, the cunning slave trader tantalizes the tribe's virulent chief, Wanalaset, describing his next target, Jane. Believing the merciless slave trader may soon succeed in kidnapping or murdering Jane, Stephen decides his family must leave for Kentucky with his four brothers. When the harsh demands of the frontier nearly tear apart their great love, Stephen and Jane must find a path through more than the wilderness. His courage is undaunted. His passion is deep. But the wilderness is full of terror. Two lives, one great love, torn apart by a frightening wilderness. All right, we are on the last grouping, and I apologize the if the has changed, like angle or being close or far away. I do a grouping of 10 and then I shut it down, do a grouping of 10, kind of let the camera recharge and all of that a little bit. So um, this particular grouping in this clip is the last 11 books in this historical romance haul. So let's go ahead and continue on. I have The Highwayman's Folly, written by Daria Vernon. This has 206 ratings with a 3.98 average. This is book number one in The Rewards of Ruin. And looks like there is a duology. There's only two books out. So, and let's see. Additional tags. We have Regency, Georgian, and Victorian. Let's see. Deep in the forest, in a decaying, haunting lodge, a curious bond flickers into existence. A life tinged by ruin. 
Beth Clark has earned perhaps the most dubious distinction in England, that of being kidnapped twice in one night. Thirty years old and burdened with new responsibilities, her life is a far cry from the rebellion of her youth. Worse, a greedy land agent has designs on her new fortune. With his, when his attempt to abduct her is waylaid by a band of highwaymen, the thieves' mysterious captain offers Beth a strange salvation, perhaps not only from a cold night, but from a cold past as well. A past marred by mutiny. Rise Booker was born to a different name, that uh, one that no longer, one that he no longer deserves. Cruel turns of fate have brought him here, to a life outside the law, a life that felt like the only possibility before she came into it. When a robbery gone sideways, he can't simply leave this woman to freeze in the high roads. But with a crew of hungry men depending on him, he can't let her go either. Okay. Next up I have Winds of Betrayal. This is an American historical novel. And it oh, looks like this is a combination of two books. Possibly. Uh, additional genre tags, yeah, it does say collection, and American Revolution, so uh, let's see, this is written by Jerry Hines, 621 ratings with a 4.1 average. This is part of the Winds of Betrayal series, and this looks like this is books number one and two. Do I have this right? Okay, so book number one is The Cry for Freedom. Book number two is Embrace of the Enemy. So the combination of the two is called Winds of Betrayal. So, yes, so this one is two books. And there are four in this series. So, okay. So, The Cry for Freedom, book one. It says it's a rousing family saga for the fight for America's independence. The winds of change bruise over the colonies. Tension against the crown is mounting daily. In Williamsburg, the rebellion burns strong in the hearts of two siblings, Jonathan and Hannah Corbett. Spirited and headstrong, Hannah finds herself thrust in the middle of a conspiracy when her father receives a strange package from Philadelphia. Jonathan, a physician for the Continental Army, is torn between duty and family. With war looming on the horizon, the siblings soon discover there is a high price to be paid for the cry for freedom. Book number two is Embrace of the Enemy. It's a dangerous game you set to play, Miss Colbert, one that can have far worse deadly consequences. In the midst of the struggle of America's bid for independence, Hannah Corbett makes a fateful decision, descending into a world of deceit. Spurred by revenge, she heads to New York, setting in motion a dangerous game for which there is no return. Searching desperately for the man who betrayed her family, she faces the cold and brutal reality of the life of a spy. Caught in a web of lies, living with betrayal, she is trapped. She has nowhere to turn except to a man it would be treacherous, it would be, oh, treasonous to love. Probably treacherous too, but treasonous is the word. Uh, let's see, setting duty and desire at war. Her heart is ripped apart when she must choose between the man who risks his career and life to protect her and the only thing that has remained her remained constant in her life, her belief in her cause. Next, I have His Brother's Montana Bride. This has two authors, Faith Reynolds and Gretchen Wheeler. This has 205 ratings with a 4.43 average. Uh, looks like this is a novella. It's 94 pages for the Kindle. Um, no additional genre text to tell you about. Looks like this is might be part of a series. It doesn't say for sure, but the image that I'm seeing says it's a mail order bride romance, so maybe there's more in that category. Not sure. A woman fleeing a life of servitude, a brother matchmaking behind the scenes. When their plans go awry, will they hold on tight to love or let it slip away? A lonely scullery maid, Jane Wilson, toils day and night at the lavish Wharton Manor in New York City. When the odious head butler takes an unseemly interest in her, she escapes using the matrimonial times, but the perfect advertisement is too good to be true. Aaron Smith is content working his small farm on the outskirts of Silver Hills. His older brother Thomas runs the general store. Seeing his brother's heartache after Thomas's old sweetheart Carolyn Nelson left Silver Hills years before, 
Aaron places an advertisement to find the perfect bride for Thomas, but a rocky first meeting with Jane, coupled with Charlotte's surprise arrival in town, means Aaron's perfect plan is about to go up in smoke. Will Jane step aside for Charlotte or cling to the groom she was promised? Has Aaron set the stage for his own heartbreak, or will true love prevail for Jane, Charlotte, and both Smith brothers? Hmm. A love square? Love triangle? That's what that sounds like. Next, I have What an Earl Wants, written by Shirley Carr. This is 1,144 ratings with a 4.01 average. This is book number one in the Scandalous Ladies series, and looks like there are four books in this series. Let's see, additional tags, Regency, Gender Queer, British, and Adult. So, what's a lord to do? Benjamin, Earl of Sinclair, is living in chaos. So many of his well-trained servants are pairing up and running off to be wed that his friends begin calling him the matchmaking Earl. Fortunately, his talented new secretary, Jay Quincy, begins setting the household to rights. But imagine Sinclair's surprise when he discovers that Jay stands for Josephine. His favorite employee is a lady in disguise. Joe desperately needs his this position and never actually lied about her gender, though she didn't expect Sinclair to figure it figure out her secret so soon. If the ton finds out, the scandal could be devastating. She's only going to stay long enough to earn sufficient money to move her ailing sister away from London. Can she succeed before word gets out and scandal brings them both down? And after working closely with the handsome, charming Sinclair, can she leave with her heart intact, even if the Earl now wants Joe as a match for himself? Huh. Okay. Um. Alrighty. It does sound good. I'm. My mind, with where it just says gender queer, keeps thinking there's probably going to be like some LGBT romance in here or transgender or something, but I'm not getting those vibes. But it could be later in the book if it's in there at all. Maybe the gender queer is just used as far as um, like a woman dressing as a man or a man dressing as a woman type of a situation. Because I know that women dress as men to go to war um, and other situations, like in this case, to probably get a job so that they can finance their needs. So I don't know. I guess I'll learn more about that when I read about it. Next, I have The Man of My Dreams by Daphne Quinn. 28 ratings with a 4.18 average. This is book number one in the Marvelous, Marvelous Merryweathers series. Okay, so the Marvelous Merryweathers series, it looks like there are three books in this series. Additional tags, there's no additional tags, but it does look like it's a novella. Um, the Kindle says it's 153 pages. The synopsis, will the daughter of a duke choose duty or love? Lady Lily Merriweather has always known her duty is to marry well. Oldest of three and a known beauty, her destitute family needs her to make an excellent match to save the rest of her sisters. But in her heart of hearts, she's always wished for love. So when the second son of a viscount arrives at her door, she ignores her heart's calling. He's not the man to save her family. The problem? The yeah. The more time they spend together, the more he helps Lily find her path, and the more certain she is that her place in this world is by his side. But how can she sacrifice her family's happiness for her own? And what will she do when his future is also on the line? Will she choose him and the love he offers, or will duty force her hand to another man? Hmm. That's got to suck to be in that type of a dilemma. All right, I... My lunch is ready, so I am going to go have my lunch, and then I'll come back and finish this up. We have one, two, three, four, five, six more books in this particular video, so I will see you in half a second. All right, <clears throat> I am back from lunch. Hope you guys are having a good day so far. Let's go ahead and do the last grouping of books here, or finish up this last grouping. So I have Discouraging the Duke, written by Alexa As 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 Aston. There's no H, so I'm guessing it's Aston. This is book number one in the Duke's Done Wrong series. There are five books in this series. All right. 2,314 ratings with a 4.23 average. Uh, let's see. Additional genre tags. Uh, Regency. 
and Chiclet are the additional tags. Accused of something they never did, five boys banished from their homes in disgrace to the place where they find the brothers of their heart. What? The, oh, okay. And build a new family. Where they find the brothers of their heart. <laughs> I guess that's just kind of throwing me. Uh, they build a new life and ties that will last a lifetime. So it sounds like each book might be following a different brother. A lonely army captain who suddenly finds himself a duke, a gentleman's daughter running an estate because her father no longer can. Two lonely souls whose, whose sparks are undeniable. Miles Notley returns home as the Duke of Winslow after being sent away for accidentally killing his younger brother when he was 10 years old, an act his older brother committed and denied. With his brother's death, Miles finds himself in unfamiliar waters. He has no idea how to run an estate, much less be a duke, until he meets an intriguing young woman. Emery Jensen came to Wildwood 10 years ago with her parents, hired to be the estate's steward and housekeeper. She has taken no more responsibility as her father's mind grow Oh, she has taken on more responsibility as her father's mind grows weak and now runs the ducal country seat. If I said that right, I don't know. Anyway, uh, when the new duke shows up, she schemes to hide her father's deficiencies, believing the Duke of Winslow won't remain long since the season is in full swing and he will need to claim a bride and provide an heir. But Miles isn't going anywhere. He becomes captivated not only by Emery's charm and confidence, but admires her skills in making Wildwood a profitable estate. Miles decides no one but Emery can be his duchess, and he is up for the challenge, ready to convince the blunt beauty in the battle of wills that they can both come up winners, if she will only say yes. Uh, let's see. Oh, and then it just is like, here's the additional books in this series. Okay, moving on. We have The Ice Duchess, written by Tracy Sumner. This has 1,189 ratings with a 4.21 average. Um, additional genre tags, uh, novella, 102 pages for the Kindle, it looks like. Christmas, Regency, Holiday Adult. So there we go. Okay. And this is, looks like a prequel to the series. The series is called The Duchess Society, and this is book number 0 0.5. So it is the prequel to the society, to this series. And then there are five five primary primary works, but there's another novella. So we have the prequel, which is what I'm going to read. And then we have books one, two, and three, and then a 3.5. And then books four and five. So there's only one other one that kind of goes in between. Um, okay. So that's that series. So this one says... A scandalous countess plays matchmaker for a man she once, once longed to take for herself. Georgiana Whitcomb, Countess Winterborn, is known as the Ice Countess for her rebellious ways and refusal to marry again. But a scandalous Christmas wager fashioned by Georgiana's childhood obsession changes everything. The demanding Duke needs a bride. Dexter Munro, me, uh, mere days from becoming the Duke of Markham, made a promise to his dying father to find a wife by the twelfth night, except the only woman he's ever desired has vowed never to marry again, not even to become his duchess. Georgiana and Dex share a sizzling attraction and a wicked past, but is their scorching passion enough to melt the ice countess's heart? Okay. Next up I have The Duke's Sword, written by C.H. Admirand. 479 ratings with a 4.19 average. This is book number one in the Duke's Guard series, and it looks like there are seven books in this series. Additional genre tags, Regency is the other one. Okay, and it says, Gwendolyn guards her bruised and battered heart like a warrior. Patrick O'Malley has no time for distractions. 
The Duke of Windmere's request to find a nanny for his newborn twins brings yet another applicant to his door. Widowed Gwendolyn Alexander's reputation precedes her as one of the most sought-after nannies among the ton. Patrick O'Malley, head of the Duke's personal guard, hopes his, this latest applicant will meet with the approval of the most difficult members of the Duke's family, his twin babes. Nothing prepares him for the physical reaction that slams, to, slams into him as the petite woman, dressed in drab, uh, Pete Brown from head to toe, steps down from the Duke's carriage. Her Irish, Irish whiskey-colored eyes hold him captive, while her voluptuous curves have his breath snagging, and his lungs as unbidden images slams into him. Oh, his breath snagging in his lungs as unbidden images slam into him. Of tangled sheets, flickering firelight, and silky brown tresses spread across the white of his pillow. Gwendolyn Alexander anticipates her reputation preceding her as she alights from the Duke's carriage. She steps down from the carriage to thank the footman for his assistance. Her gaze collides with an impossibly handsome, broad-shouldered man, garbed in black from head to toe. Desire flickers in his eyes the color of polished emeralds, reminding her of Beltrain fires, drawing her inexorably toward him. When Gwendolyn and Patrick find themselves at a at cross purposes protecting the little ones from threats of kidnapping, they must learn to compose and work together before the kidnapper strikes again. Hmm. All right. Next up, I have The La Gray Lady of the Manor, written by Elizabeth uh, Kisane. This has 19 ratings with a 3.84 average, and this is book number 5.5 .5 in Trysts and Treachery. There are five primary works, so let's see, three, four, so there's a book three and then a 3.5 and then books four and five and then 5.5. .5. So it's two novellas it looks like through in the series. And it looks like this is a short story. It's uh, the Kindle edition is 66 pages. When the magic of love becomes something darker, the night hides more than just May Day revels. Deep in the Essex countryside, the Grey Lady of Patience Bridge lures unwary travelers to their deaths. At nearby Temple Roding Manor, superstitious maidservant Letty believes herself cursed and is desperate for help. The irre irrepressible Perkin is secretly enlisted to quell her fears, but he soon discovers that something unearthly is stalking Letty. Why has it picked on this innocent young beauty, and could the haunting be connected with the Grey Lady's tragedy? To free herself, Letty hazards everything in a daring gamble, and the smitten Perkin agrees to help. But if her plan fails, it won't just be the dead who are determined to take the revenge on the pair, but the living as well. And the living can be far more dangerous. Okay, it says this story was first published as part of USA Today best-selling box set upon a midnight dreary. So... There you go. And um, I don't know if I said, but there's no additional genre tags on that. Okay, the last two. We have The Night Queen, written by Denise Day. This has 403 ratings with a 3.78 average. This is book number one in the Romantic Fairy Tales for Adults. And there are three books in this series. Additional genre tags, retelling, fantasy, romance, fairy tale, adventure, new adult, and young adult. But from the name of the series where it's Tales for Adults, I'm guessing the young adult is not applicable. But we'll see. My heart is like broken glass. Northerner, uh, Northerner, leave it broken or you'll get hurt putting it back together. Mina. To most, I'm the villain, Night Queen, Demon's Bride, Dark Magic Witch. But to the suitors my father has invited from the barbaric north, I'm their ticket to a mighty crown. I could be a good princess and play along, bend like a blade of grass in the wind, but I won't. Escape is my only option now, and as cruel fate has it, I'll need the help of a northern warrior to survive. But the price he asks for my freedom might be more than I'm willing to pay. It could cost me everything. It could mean my demise. And then underneath Alric, it says, To most, she's as beautiful as an angel, with a heart as dark as the night itself. They say no light can reach her iron heart, but they are wrong. 
Her heart isn't frozen, it's broken. She mistrusts me, thinks I'll be her ruin. But may the gods be my witness, it's her who will be mine. Um, let's see, from the author, this is a beautiful, dark, and romantic reimagining of the long-forgotten German fairy tale, King Thrushbeard. Okay, so is this is a retelling of a German fairy tale. That's interesting. This was, uh, which was once one of the very first stories to use the enemies to lovers trope. Oh, interesting. First published by the beloved brothers Grimm, whose works include such classics as Cinderella, Beauty and the Beast, and Rapunzel. This book is a must-read if you love to read an adult version of a compelling old fairy tale. Enjoy the romances with sizzling passion. Um, let's see, first in a series. And ends, the book ends on a mild cliffhanger. So, but I think book two is already out because this one was published in 2022. So, anyway, there we go. All right, the last book in the historical romance haul Ebook Call is The Rescued Bride's Savior, written by Amelia Rose. This has 1,270 ratings with a 4.37 average. This is book number one in the Bear Creek Brides series. There are 12 primary works, so it says 15 total. So let's see. Okay, so 13 through 15 are box sets. So it's a combination of books 1 through 4, and then 5 through 8, and 9 through 12. So there are 12, right? Yes, 12 books in this series. For additional genre tags, we have Western, Clean, Mail Order Bride. So there we go. All right, <clears throat> the synopsis. Matthew Jenkins feels isolated on his remote rural ranch. Though he longs for a family, women in mining country, uh, yeah, country are scarcer than gold nuggets. So he's delighted by the dapper response to his mail-order bride ad from a comely Virginian lady. Jenny Phillips' good name, or Jenny Phillips's good name, was ruined by her father's stupidity. Forced into hiding with her ma, she's desperate to put her pa's stained reputation behind. But when her domineering uncle tries to sell her to the highest bidder, she flees by answering a lonely Montana man's classified. Upon meeting the Virginia Rose, Matthew falls hard and offers to help her get settled. And though Jenny finds herself attracted to the kind-hearted cattle farmer, she fears a marriage amid deadly conflict between miners and natives could spoil their chance at happiness. Can the couple survive a bumpy trail to love and begin a new life together? Uh, let's see, it's first in a series. If you like sweet relationships, frontier tensions, and action-packed pages, then you'll adore this tale. So, uh, that is it. Let me know, have you read any of these books? Have you read books by any of these authors? Do any of these books intrigue you, or from the synopsis, are you going to give it a pass? Uh, let me know, talk to me in the comments section below, and until next time, stay true to yourself, and enjoy a good book, and I'll talk to you later.